Welcome to this video on order of operations. Let's begin. In the past, you may have heard the memory technique, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So this is a way of remembering order of operations. Unfortunately, we need to just debunk this memory technique because it's sort of right, but there's a lot of holes in it. There's a lot of things that are missing. And there are several co common misunderstandings that can arise from using this memory technique. So let's look at the correct order. So the first thing is instead of parentheses or please, we need to include every grouping symbol. So it's true that parentheses are a type of grouping symbol, but as we advance in our math uh, career and we study uh, math more, we're gonna realize that parentheses are not the only grouping symbol we're gonna run across. We also have brackets. We also saw in a previous section, absolute value. Those are also considered grouping symbols. And then sometimes we write our division signs like this. Well, this division sign is actually grouping all of the top numbers together and it's grouping all of the bottom numbers together. So when division is written that way, it also acts as a grouping symbol. So that is the first change we need to make. So again, instead of P, now we're gonna use G. So no more P. There's a G. Okay, for step two, that's the excuse or the exponents. Now we need step two to include both exponents and roots. Notice they're on the same line here, which means they have the same level of precedence. So we still also have exponents and roots um, working from left to right. So I'm not sure why that wasn't on the original um, copy. Okay, so step two, instead of just being E, is going to be ER. Again, ER are going to be on the same level. So then let's look at um, MD, my dear Aunt Sally. So these are still valid. However, unfortunately, because of the, um, the memor memory technique, some people, many people in fact, think that multiplication, since M becomes before D, has a higher level of precedence or priority than division. But that is not true. So notice the way we're writing it. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Notice that M and D are on the same line. So in other words, if division comes first, I'm going to do division before multiplication because they have the same priority. So that's the third change. The same is true with addition and subtraction. Again, if subtraction comes before addition, I'm going to do that first, um, again, because addition and subtraction have the same level of precedence. So the way I think about it, it's kind of silly, but it works, is that think about multiplication and division are twins. Okay, so there are two, two siblings or maybe two kids that you're babysitting, whatever, right? And then you care about them, you love them both equally. So if one kid asks you for a snack and then the other kid asks you for a snack, right? Just, I mean, maybe if you're clever, you could feed them both at the same time. But let's say you couldn't do that, right? You're just gonna give the kid a snack who asked first to make it fair so that there's not uh, chaos, right? Same thing with addition and subtraction. They are twins. They have the same priority. So whichever one comes first, right? Whichever one asks you for something first, that's the one you're going to do. So let's take all of these, um, these concepts and apply it to a bunch of problems. So number one says two to the third power plus 30 divided by five. So notice I have this new acronym and I don't have a good memory technique for it. So maybe uh, you can think of a clever one. Um, it's GERMDUS. So we have grouping symbols. So let's just take a minute and look through our expression and see if there are any grouping symbols. I don't see any, so I'm just gonna move on. Um, but in the meantime, I'll put a green check here to say that I have checked that off. Now we have exponents and roots. Do you see any exponents or roots? Well, I see an exponent. I see two to the third power. Specifically, two to the third power is eight. So I'm gonna do that. I don't see any more exponents or roots, so I'm gonna move to multiplication and division. Another um, advice that I have for you is, and it's gonna be a little bit of a pain, but it's gonna save you a lot of trouble in the end, which is to copy the entire problem every time you change something. 
So one reason this is important is if this is a graded assignment, something that your teacher is going to look at, they can see your work. Um, they know that you didn't just use um, some sort of math software to evaluate it or type it into a calculator all in one step. They understand, right? They know that you know order of operations. Okay, so the next thing that we have to look for is multiplication and division. Um, I only see one instance of either of those, and that's division right here. So I need to do that before I can add 30 to 8. And if I didn't do that, by the way, it would give me the wrong answer. So 30 divided by 5, remember you can always use your calculator, you can type that in. 30 divided by 5 is 6, so now I have 8 plus 6. Okay, so that's multiplication and division taken care of. So last but not least, we have addition and subtraction. Of course, that's the only thing we have left. As you can clearly see, 8 plus 6 is 14. Okay, so my final answer is 14. So one thing that I think is important to do um, is to sort of look at how I could do this the wrong way. And I just want to demonstrate to you that if I did it in a different order, that I would get the, um, the, I would get the wrong answer. Okay, and I'll, I'll do all of this stuff in, um, let's see, let's do it in um, an orange color just to remind us that we're doing it, um, uh, that, that, that um, this is not the correct way to do it. Okay, so let's say that I still did 2 to the third power first. So then I have 8 plus 30 divided by 5. But then let's say I forget, right, that I have to divide first and then I accidentally add first. So then I would have 38 divided by 5. Well, 38 divided by 5, it doesn't go evenly. So I would have to either leave it as an improper fraction, which is my preferred method, or I could write it as a decimal 7.6. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a, a line through this just to emphasize the fact that this is the wrong way to do it. But the reason I did that, I wanted to show you that depending on the order you do things, you will get different answers. So that is why it's so important to follow the correct order of operations. Remember, math is really like learning a language, right? Um, so I think most people have a sort of an intuitive feel for numbers and how they work. However, right, what we're really learning when we learn mathematics is we're learning this artificial man-made or human-made notation that is used to express different concepts. Okay, so we're learning something artificial and um, made up rather than learning something that's intrinsically true. Okay, so you're really learning not math, but you're really learning the notation and what we mean when we say two to the third power or what we mean when we have um, a long expression that has to be evaluated. All right, let's try the next one. So again, I'm going to go through and check off um, what I'm doing. So first we look for grouping symbols. I see one set of grouping symbols, that is 8 times 3. Therefore, I must do that first. 8 times 3 is 24. Again, it's a little bit tedious and time consuming, but it will pay off in the end. I'm copying the whole entire problem right below. And if you would like to even help yourself a little bit more, you can um, change the color of what is new. So um, I'm done with grouping symbols. I do not see any exponents or roots. I do not see any multiplication or division. What I do see is addition of subtraction. So the important thing here is that I work from left to right. That means I must do seven minus four first before I do the other subtraction. So seven minus four is three. And again, I bring everything else down. Remember, you can always use calculators for these steps, right? If you don't know what 7 minus 4, just type it in your calculator. 7 minus 4 is 3. If you don't know what is 3 minus 24, type it in your calculator. Your calculator should give you negative 21. So that would be your final answer. So again, I just want to take a minute and show you the wrong way to do this. Okay, so let's just say um, I had... I had 7 minus 4 minus 24. So let's pretend that I did 4 minus 24 first. Well, 4 minus 24 is negative 20. So then I would have 7 minus negative 20 or 7 plus 20, which is 27. Okay, notice that that is not the correct answer. I can't do that. Okay, so again, be careful. Watch your order of operations. All right, let's do the next problem. So this one, we have five plus the absolute value of three minus six. 
So first we look for grouping symbols. Remember absolute value uh, signs are grouping symbols. They do other things, right? They transform numbers in other ways, but they also take precedence. So um, again, I'm gonna encourage you to copy the rest of the problem. So we're gonna have five plus the absolute value of something, and that something is gonna be three minus six. So in your calculator, type in three minus six, you should get negative three. So we're not done with the group, grouping symbols yet, are we? Right? We still have to figure out, well, what is the absolute value of negative three? And I'm gonna write it a little bit better so it looks slightly less awkward. Well, remember, by definition, absolute value, the answer is always positive. So the absolute value of negative three is positive three. Okay, so we're done with that step. We don't see any exponents, roots, multiplication, or division. All we see now is addition. So we just have five plus three is equal to eight, and we are done with that problem. All right, let's look at number four. So first we look at grouping symbols. Um, again, at this point, we've done enough examples that you should be able to pause the video, work the problem through by yourself, and then unpause it, maybe even change it to 2x speed, and or click through on um, fast forward to see if you are correct. Then if you're correct, you can go into the next example. If you're not, of course, then you can go back and rewatch it, see where you made a mistake. All right, so our grouping symbols, we do have some parentheses here, right? So we have negative 9 plus 4, so that's the first thing we need to evaluate. If you type in negative nine plus four in a calculator, you get negative five. I'm going to keep the parentheses there just so that I don't um, get confused by that negative sign. Notice I'm taking a minute to bring everything else down. The two comes down, the subtraction comes down, the square root of 100 comes down, the plus sign comes down. Again, the only thing that's different is that negative nine plus four got transformed to a negative five. Okay, so again, take some time to copy the problem every single time, work down, not across on your paper, because that way it's much easier to follow your own work and to um, check if you made mistakes. So we're done with grouping symbols. How about exponents and roots? Do you see any of those? Well, I see a root, I see the square root of 100. So what is the square root of 100? Well, if you type it in your calculator, the square root of 100 is 10. So this minus sign comes down. Okay, the only thing that changes is the square root of 100 becomes 10. This plus sign comes down and the negative five comes down. So now what do we have? Well, we're done with exponents and roots. I don't see any more. I also don't see any multiplication or division. So now we must do addition and subtraction. And remember, we must do it from left to right. So we'll start with two minus 10. Two minus 10 is negative eight. So then we have negative eight plus negative five. Again, notice that I'm taking the time to write out the whole equation, or sorry, expression, every single time I do this. So we're almost done. We can type in negative eight plus negative five into our calculator, and that gives us a final answer of negative 13. All right, let's look at another problem. So this time we wanna look for grouping symbols. Are there any grouping symbols? Well, one might say there are grouping symbols because you see these parentheses. However, notice that there's nothing inside the parentheses. We just have negative three. There's nothing inside the parentheses that can be simplified or evaluated. So what purpose are these parentheses actually serving? Well, it's really just a fancy multiplication, isn't it? It's really just saying five times negative three. So the parentheses are actually here in the multiplication and division section. They're really not in grouping symbols. So we don't have any grouping symbols. Again, there's nothing inside parentheses, inside brackets, inside absolute value that can be evaluated or simplified right now. So let's move on to exponents and roots. Do you see any? Well, I see the square root of 25, and I know that the square root of 25 is five. Again, I'm gonna take a minute and just copy the rest of the problem. I have 45 divided by five, parentheses, negative three, or times negative three, plus five. I don't see any more exponents or roots in my problem, so therefore I must move on to multiplication and division. Again, I invite you to remember that multiplication and division are twins. Okay, they have the same level of pre precedence, it's just whichever one comes first. So which one do you see first? Do you see division first or multiplication first? I see division first. 45 divided by five is nine. Again, I'm gonna take a minute and transcribe, copy down the rest of the problem. Do we see any more multiplication or division? I do. I see that we have nine times negative three. Nine times negative three is negative 27. Then we have negative 27 plus five, that gives us negative 22. 
So at that point, right, I was done with multiplication and division. The only thing left was addition and subtraction. So I did that. So this is my final answer, negative 22. Let's do another problem. Again, you should be doing this on your own um, after you pause the video, then unpause it to check that you are correct. Okay, so grouping symbols. I do see some grouping symbols. I see five minus 12 in parentheses, and I know that I can simplify them. So what is five minus 12? You can always type it in your calculator. Five minus 12 is negative seven. Then I'm going to take a minute and just transcribe every other part of this problem. Notice the only thing that changed is five minus 12 became a negative seven, right? And I put that in green so that it is obvious. Nothing else changed. Okay, you might argue that there are more grouping symbols because we see more parentheses. However, when I look more closely, I look inside those parentheses, I can see that there's nothing inside those parentheses that um, needs simplifying. Therefore, they're really just fancy multiplication. They're just, their purpose there, the parentheses, is just to um, contain the negative sign next to the number. So now we need to move on to exponents and roots. Do you see any exponents or roots? I do. I see negative five squared. If you go back to my video on exponents, you will remember that negative five squared is negative five times five. There's only one negative sign. The only thing that's getting squared, or rather the base of the problem, is five, not negative five. And again, you can also type this in your calculator. If you type in negative five squared, just as you see it, without any parentheses, it should give you negative 25. Okay, then I'm gonna take a minute and bring down the rest of the problem. Okay, so now we're on to multiplication and division. I do not see any more grouping symbols. I don't see any more exponents. I don't see any more roots. So do we have any multiplication or division? Well, I see, see some. I see negative seven times negative three. So what is negative seven times negative three? Well, negative seven times negative three is positive 21. If you're not sure, you can type it in your calculator. Remember, everything else comes down. This minus sign wasn't part of that operation, was it? Right? This is the operation that I looked at. So everything else just comes down. It just gets copied. Okay? So now I don't see any more multiplication. I don't see any division. So now I just have a subtraction problem. I have negative 25 minus 21. Again, you are always welcome to do this on your calculator. Um, so you should get negative 25 minus 21 is negative 46. And that should be your final answer. So we're gonna do a few more examples just to um, emphasize and um, do as many problems as possible. So again, we start with our grouping symbols. So in this problem, I see a few sets of grouping symbols. One grouping symbol that I see is six minus seven. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Um, it doesn't really matter what order we do. So six minus seven is negative one. Um, let me take a minute and write that in a different color so it stands out. So six minus seven becomes negative one. Okay, then I'm just gonna bring down everything else. The plus comes down, the five comes down. Now notice here, we have another set of grouping symbols, don't we? Hmm, okay, so that would be probably the next thing that we wanna do. But then inside of those grouping symbols, we have even more things. So another way to think about this is this is sort of like a problem in and of itself, isn't it? Okay, so we have 32 divided by four squared. So inside of these parentheses, we need to kind of start over. Well, there aren't any grouping symbols inside of the parentheses, are there? But there are exponents or roots. So the exponents or roots are the four squared. So inside of these parentheses, the first thing I need to evaluate is the four squared. What is four squared? Well, four squared is 16. So again, even though it's a little bit tedious and a little bit time consuming, I'm copying the entire problem every time I change one thing. All right, so now inside the parentheses, I'm still looking just right here. I have division, I have 32 divided by 16. So 32 divided by 16 is two. So I'm gonna change this to two. And again, I'm bringing down every other part of the problem, showing every step, okay? So now I'm back to the main problem. So the reason I used tiny little orange checks is because I was just working inside the parentheses. So looking at the problem as a whole, we can see we're done with grouping symbols. It's true we have parentheses here, but there's nothing inside the parentheses that can be simplified. They're really just um, sort of containing the negative sign in front of the one. In fact, if you would desire to do so, you could rewrite the problem without those parentheses. 
Um, and in addition, we see some parentheses here, right? But again, those parentheses are just fancy multiplication. So if you desired, you certainly don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could rewrite it as um, five times two using a different multiplication symbol, um, probably not an X, right? We don't wanna use X in algebra. Um, you can use a star or a dot. Okay, so we're done with grouping symbols. I don't see any exponents or roots. However, I do see multiplication, right? We have five times two. So we have negative one plus five times two. I'm just copying it down. So five times two is 10. Oops. Um, so now we are done with multiplication and division. The only thing that's left is addition and subtraction. So again, you can do this in your calculator or in your head, negative one plus 10 is positive nine. So your final answer is positive nine. All right, last problem. So let's start with our grouping symbols. So I see one set of grouping symbols that needs to be simplified. So again, it's true that there's another set of parentheses here, but if I look inside, the only thing inside the parentheses is negative three. So the parentheses over there are just acting to contain that negative sign. Um, they're really not um, something that I can simplify. So if I look inside of these grouping symbols, I see that I have a few operations. I have a subtraction, I have addition, and I also have a, an exponent, a square. So what of the, which of those do I have to do first? Well, we need to do the exponent first, okay? So I'm gonna take a minute and I'm just gonna write down the whole rest of the problem. I'm gonna leave a space here because I don't know what's gonna be in those parentheses yet. Okay, so I didn't do any math yet, right? All I did was copy the rest of the problem. Okay, so roots have to come first, right? I need to do three squared. So what is three squared? Do you remember? Well, three squared is three times three. Three times three is nine, okay? So again, the only thing that's changed so far is that I have changed the three squared to a nine. That's the only thing that's different, okay? So again, we're still really on the first step. We're still, really, still um, looking at grouping symbols. So we have eight minus five plus nine. Well, eight minus five is three. And then three plus nine is 12. So we have the square root of 16 minus 12 divided by negative three times two. Okay, so take a minute, stare at that, make sure you understand what we did there. Make sure you um, agree with the steps that we took. Okay. All right, so now we have simplified everything inside of our grouping symbols. So again, we're really only done the first step of our operation. Um, so the only parentheses that I see left um, are these parentheses, which again, there's nothing inside there that could be simplified. And these parentheses right there, again, not really acting as grouping symbols right now. So we have to move on to exponents and roots. Do you see any exponents or roots? Well, I see the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is four. So we have four minus 12. I'm gonna drop the parentheses there. We don't really need them. You can keep them there if you'd like to, it's up to you. So we have four minus 12 divided by negative three times two. Wow, that's a lot, okay. However, I don't see any more exponents or roots, so I'm going to drop that. So now we need to do multiplication and division from left to right, okay? So as I read, as I go across here, what is the first symbol you come across? Well, the first symbol I see that's either multiplication or division is this division sign right there. So what I need to do is I have to divide 12 divided by negative three. So let me write this down here so that nobody gets confused. So we have four minus 12 divided by negative three times two, okay? So I'm gonna bring down the four, that's not changing. I'm gonna bring down the minus sign, also not changing, okay? What is going to change is 12 divided by negative three. 12 divided by negative three is negative four. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring down the times and I'm gonna bring down the two. Okay, so let's think about the next step, right? We're still on multiplication and division. I see a multiplication sign right here. So we have negative four times two. Negative four times two is negative eight. Okay, the four stays, we just bring him down and then minus sign stays. So we are now done multiplication and division, okay? Now we can do addition and subtraction. 
So remember, when we learned when we added and subtracted um, integers, that minus a negative becomes plus a positive. So it's 4 plus 8 or 12. So that is our final answer. So there's a different way to do the same problem. So um, even though this is technically my last example, I'm going to do this over again in a, di in a different sort of way. Um, and if you want to watch it, you can. You certainly don't have to. So another way to think about this is if you wanted to think about it as negative 12 divided by negative 3. You can do that. You can think about it that way. If you do, you need to sort of artificially add a plus here. So instead of 4 minus 12, it would be 4 plus negative 12. Okay. To me, this is the more confusing of the two ways to do it, but it is still valid if you want to do it this way. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing negative 12 divided by negative 3. Well, negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. So now I have 4 plus 4 times 2. I have to multiply first. 4 times 2 is 8. And then I have 4 plus 8 is 12. Again, this is equally valid. Um, but what you have to do, the transformation you have to make, is you have to change your subtraction sign here to, to plus and negative sign.